Wow, wow, wow. Singaporean gives geopolitics lessons to American China expert. Asia Society Policy Institute, in partnership with Perry World House at the University of Pennsylvania, hosts a discussion on the U.S.-China relationship and how it impacts global trends. Speakers include Kishore Mabubani, 2023-24 Schlager Visiting Fellow at the University of Pennsylvania's Perry World House, and Orville Skell, Arthur Ross, Director of the Asia Society's Center on U.S.-China Relations, Rory Daniels, Managing Director of Asia Society Policy Institute is China is not just another great power. It is a Marxist-Leninist regime that under Xi Jinping has become very, very different than we experienced in the 80s, even in the 90s in flux. So I, I'm curious to know how you view the internal political shift in China where it is returning to a much more uh, sort of Maoist mode, not completely so, and how other countries, the comfort levels they feel about accepting China's hegemony in Asia, if not in the world. Uh, are you comfortable with this? I mean, Singapore is a small little country. How do you feel about that? Now, in your, in your point about uh, the internal uh, political makeup of China and isn't China becoming more Marxist-Leninist or communist and are we worried about that and I think here I want to emphasize that there is only one country in the world uh, that passes judgments on the internal political systems of other country it's a very exceptional country and I think you all know of American exceptionalism. I can tell you that, you know, the UN is not too far away from here. It's a mile or two away. If you walk into the United Nations, you will find that one of the most uh, sacred principles of the UN Charter, uh, which is actually uh, held to very strongly by member states of the UN, is that we will not interfere in each other's internal affairs. When the United States first fell in love with China in 1971, can I ask you who was the leader of China at that point? Was it Mao Zedong? Would you call Mao Zedong a great defender of human rights? Would you say that he is, this is a man with a liberal mind, a liberal spirit, someone you can, you know, develop a kinship with? You know what I'm getting at, right? So when it comes to geopolitics, it's a very cruel business. Ideology can be put aside when necessary, can be brought to the fore when necessary. And even today, if you say that the United States will stand up and stand up the Communist Party's regimes, why are you cultivating Vietnam? What's the difference? I mean, is, isn't, doesn't Vietnam also have a Communist Party in power? So I'm only saying this because the rest of the world when I say that the rest of the world has changed, they've become much more sophisticated. They see through all this. They see that, yes, there's a serious geopolitical contest going on between the United States and China. They are very worried about it. They want to maintain good ties with both, and they won't pass judgment. And it's not just, to be fair, Orville, it's not just Singapore. I can, I can give you, if you want a list of 100 countries, I can give you a list of 100 countries that are in that position. Hello friends, we come to the end already. Have you subscribed yet? Yes, press the subscribe button and the like button and the share button. Thank you and have a nice day.